right, guys, what is popping? What is good? This is your boy Brew Mall, and we are back with more Trails in the Sky second chapter. So, before we get started, like always, if you haven't spent time with God today, whether that's just reading your Bible or praying, but I, I suggest you do both, um, go ahead, pause this video, go ahead and do that. Come back because this video is always going to be waiting for you. Because on this channel, we put God first. All right. Oh man, we got some um, we got some craziness going on uh, this week, guys. So a lot of y'all may laugh, y'all may not laugh. I have no idea, but um, I ended up. I found out that my couch had bed bugs. I have no idea how that happened. Um, because I'm fairly I'm a fairly clean person. I may have picked it up from somewhere, and like it, one of them probably hitched a ride on my clothes or something, and got on my couch. And yeah, I've been spending the last 24 hours just straight cleaning, and it has been annoying. Um, like, I've been washing stuff. Silly me, this is safe for reason this way. Let me take the elevator opposite end. Okay. So yeah, I've been, um, I've been washing clothes. I've been doing mad deep scrubs. I even bombed my apartment this <laughs> I bombed my apartment while I was at work this morning. Uh, came back. Are we going this way? Oh, that's what they meant. Elevator system. Access to sanctuary is restricted. Please provide voice over location. Forcer number... Is that 15? Yeah. Forcer number 15, Ren. Codename, Angel of Slaughter. Destination, Sanctuary. Access granted. Welcome, Enforcer Ren. Um, alright, so where'd the signal to? This took me up. Alright. I actually don't. Okay. And here we are. This is the sanctuary. The professor should be just inside. Hey, Ren. What is it? All right. Were you the one controlling that Joshua puppet in the base? Uh huh. That's right. The professor asked me to. Meet, huh? Uh. So you're a victim of the society too, huh? Never mind. Well, here we go. See you later. All right, I honestly thought I would get more chance, yeah, more chances to explore. I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. I think we're at the deck right now. There should be a room right here. Oh, this isn't the deck. I actually have no idea where I'm at. Hold on, let me let me look real quick to make sure that I didn't um I didn't go anywhere wrong. But we got that first area. I guess we get to explore a little bit more afterwards but yeah i've been dealing with massive uh, yeah i've been dealing with um these bug problems and they seem to be good like my dad know he knew exactly what to do so he told me exactly what i needed to do i got all this stuff and i was able to uh get it while it was still being fresh so yeah that's a bummer so i don't have a uh, i can't use my couch i'm using my uh, chair that i never use because i can't i mean i can lean back in it but it, i don't know it's just not that comfortable So I apologize if my audio is a little off because I am not really, um, I'm not in my optimal seated seating for my, where my mic should be at. So yeah, if my voice sounds a little off or if my audio sounds a little off, I apologize already. Anyways, welcome aboard the glorious. It's been some time since we last met Estelle. Ah, Professor Alba, I thought it was you. I'd already remember... I finally remember when I heard your voice a minute ago. Cassius Bright's daughter continues to impress. The seal is on your... The seal on your memory wasn't particularly strong, but throwing it off on your own was still worth some manner of praise. My apologies. I have yet to properly introduce myself. My true name is Georg Wiseman. I think it's Georg, or it could be George, but I think it's pronounced Georg. I, if I'm wrong, someone put in the comments, please. All right. I am one of the Anguis, supervisors of the society. An Anguis? So you're like 
one of the high commanders of a society. Hmm, something like that. Now, as I said before, I am completely prepared to answer any questions you may have. What would you like to ask first? Um, honestly, there's so much to ask. I'm not even sure where to start. You needn't fret. Take your time thinking things over. If it pleases you, I could play a relaxing etude while you collect your thoughts. Yeah, I think I'll pass. You know, you didn't strike me as someone who would be into that sort of thing. Well, whatever. Here's a question for you. Was the whole poor archaeologist thing a total act or what? Huh. Well, putting the, uh, yeah, putting the poverty aside, I actually am an archaeologist. And, as in, and as a, uh, and as an aside, there are four A-letter words? Come on now. I picked up the pipe organ during my time with the church. I may not be an Erebonian you spend so much time with, but I dare say I'm decent, wouldn't you? Hang on, the church? Like the Septian? I was something of an academic priest. A chance meeting with the Grand, Ma with the Grand Master led me discarding the path of faith. My knowledge of artifacts, paltry as it is, still proves useful from time to time, thankfully. With our current plan in particular, the one who tempted Colonel Richard into yeah, the one who tempted Colonel Richard into starting the coup, and the one who arranged all the gospel experiments, it was you. It certainly was. And it was all for the sake of our cause. Your gospel plan? I saw something in the research facility about that. Your plan is to take the Oriole, isn't it? Take the Oriole. That's not entirely accurate. But, for the response of this conversation, it will suffice, yes? What is the Oriole, anyways? Why do you want it so bad? I know it's said to be one of the treasures of Adios, but just what is it? Ah, for the moment, I must keep the exact nature of the Oriole a secret. I would, after all, so hate to spoil the surprise. The surprise, right. Thanks. Our plan has moved into its third phase. Very, very soon now, its true nature will be plain to see. <laughs> I can barely contain the, my, my anticipation. And once the Oriole has shown itself, then, then we will see the potential of mankind unfuel, 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 I can't pronounce that word, before our eyes. The potential of mankind. Ragnar said something about that too. Oh, the holy beast was willing to bestow his wisdom upon you. Yeah, he looks genuinely surprised. Perhaps you are doing more than simply living to your father, living in your father's shadow. Spare me the flattery. And what the heck? I keep asking you things and you keep dodging the answers. Do forgive me. It wasn't my intentions to be so evasive. I can, however, easily answer the question I know you want to ask most. The what? What keeps you from asking it? Don't be afraid. Muster your courage and just ask it already. Joshua. Where's Joshua? Hmm. His exact location is currently unknown to me. From what I've observed, he's up to something with the Sky Bandit. Their movements have proven to be quite elusive. Though he is alive and well, I can assure you. Okay. Joshua's specialties are covert operation and guerrilla warfare. If he catches you slipping, you will die, but he can never stack up in a one-in-one -one fight. I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, I was the one who tuned him who tuned him to excel at such. But he has a long, but he has long since passed, or but he has long since surpassed even my greatest expectations. I gleefully await seeing the height of his potential. You come now. You needn't look so angry. When Joshua was entrusted to my care, his heart was akin to a glass ornament dashed against a paving stone. He was my first attempt at rebuilding such a shattered soul. It was not natural, you think, for an academic to be curious about the result of his work. What did you tell Joshua on the day of the Queen's birthday celebration? 
I merely removed the block on his memory and told him the truth. That he, once taken into your home, had unwillingly been acting as a spy and sending guild information to the society. That Richard Koo succeeded in its own right because of him. And finally that. Oh, uh, what's that? Oh. Thanks to his efforts, the ground was at last fertile for our plan. I even rewarded him. I formally released him from uh, from his obligations to the society. I finally get it. Why Joshua that night? Why he disappeared? Why he said goodbye without... Yeah, with that look on his face. Hmm. Yes. I must say, I did find that regrettable. To think Joshua would abandon you so coldly after regaining himself. I recommended that he just pretend he knew nothing of it and just continue his life with you. But alas, I suppose my generosity backfired, no? It did, boy. I'm amazed. I'm amazed you can even say that. You're the one who chased Joshua into a corner in the first place. He didn't even have a choice. And so he had to. To look like that. To give his harmonica to me. And say goodbye, Estelle. All of it. Every last bit. It's all your fault. Dang, Luve was already there? Luve? Alright. Uh, yeah, the heck did you come from? I was here from the start. You simply didn't bother to notice. What an undelightful performance. Is that Campanella? Oh, no. Well, yeah, maybe. They are here. I guess it was just Bulong. Alright. You performed so well in completing my challenges, too. Did I not teach you to think before you act? Uh, come on, give her some credit. It takes balls to pick a fight with him. Agreed. Regardless of her skills, her courage certainly is impressive. Though I wonder if we should call it courage or, courage, or mere foolishness. Ah, oh, crap. Alright, so you're the Divine Blade's, ain't, uh, Divine Blade's daughter. This is Campanella, right? Yeah, that's Campanella. There we go. It would be the first time that we've met. I'm Enforcer Number Zero, Campanella the Fool. Nice to meet you. Another one? Stop it, guys. You're scaring her. Friend, too? You don't need to worry, Estelle. I know what I said last time, but we aren't here to hurt you or anything. Promise. Huh? Hey, Professor, why not ask Estelle right now? Well, now is a good time as any. How about it, Estelle? Would you like to join Ouroboros? What? I'm sorry, I misheard that. Would you say it one more time? I asked if you'd like to join the Society of Ouroboros. You wouldn't become a full-fledged enforcer right away, of course. You would be more a candidate for the position. What? Are you insane? Come, yeah, <laughs> come now. It's hardly a leap of logic you're thinking. Joshua has been rather stubborn about returning, but with you here, he would undoubtedly come back to us and to you. Oh, um... Estelle, you want to see Joshua again more than anything else, right? If you join us, that'll come right away. What's there to even think about? But... Now, Ren, Estelle might need some time to weigh your options. We'll be departing the ship for a little while, on business, Estelle. You may give us your answer when we return. And I do apologize for this, but your options must remain fairly limited during your stay. Feel free to request anything that you need. But you'll be staying in your cabin. I'd be like, yo, can I get some red beans and rice? <laughs> Did they even put a bathroom in here? If I join the society, I'll meet Joshua again. 
That's all but guaranteed. And besides, I don't have to join them for real, right? I can just pretend to join them and, and learn about how they operate. I'm not the best actress in the world, so it might be hard, but it's better than just being locked up. No, that's stupid. That isn't, yeah, that isn't the way I do things. Yeah, pardon me. Huh? You? Eh, no need to be so, uh, no need to be so on guard. I have no intention on harming you, though if you try something like that little stun of yours earlier, I may have no other choice. Yeah, well, sorry. What are you doing in here? Yeah, what are you doing in here anyways? Aren't you guys going out somewhere? The professor and the others are the ones who will be advancing the plan. I'm just staying behind and minding the glorious. What is it? Yeah, what is it you people are planning on doing? If you wish to find out, why not accept the professor's invitation? You'll learn most of our plans if you do. <laughs> it seems you have your answer. But you're still hesitating, aren't you? Hmm. If you want my advice, Estelle Bright, you are not suited for the society of Ouroboros at all. In both ability and personality. Do you have to be so completely blunt about it? Don't misunderstand me. The potential for the necessary skill within you is somewhere. But your personality? You have too little darkness within you to be part of Ouroboros. Darkness? All those in service of the Grandmaster bear some kind of darkness on their shoulders. Myself, the Professor, the other Enforcers, Joshua too, needless to say. Hey, what's your relationship to Joshua anyways? Our relationship? Joshua was really focused on you. He seemed to know who you were even though he didn't recognize you with that mask on. Now, and if you guys remember too, during the play that they had in the first game, Luve was also there. He was the guy that was standing in front of the door and after the play, and like when the play was over, he was the one standing in front of the uh, gymnasium door and left soon after. And you saw like, jo I believe you saw, I believe we saw Joshua staring at him, but not necessarily couldn't see it because he was dark, I guess. I have to go back and look at it, but I believe that's what happened. But he definitely was there during the play. And on top of that, it seemed like he was desperate to find out who you were. That doesn't surprise me. The professor sealed part of his memory away. He was hypnotized in such a way that the moment he left the society, he could remember little about us. Even if he remembered his actions as part of the society, he could not remember his confidence or his comrade. I I don't remember what I, I yeah I, I pressed A too fast. I'm sorry. That would have been the core of his dilemma. That's. The memories of his childhood would be the same. Even if he remembers Karin. I'm sorry, not Karin. Karen. Yeah, even if he remembers Karen. He likely would have only loosely remembered me. I see. So that's why. Wait, Karen? I've heard that name before. Hmm? If you, we've, we definitely heard the name before, guys. It was in the first game, if you guys remember. Karen Astray. A childhood friend of mine and Joshua's older sister. She died ten years ago. Huh? That harmonica? Yeah, that harmonica you have was originally Karen's. Joshua held on to it as a memento. And then he passed it on to you. Joshua had an older sister? Um, how? How did Karen, um, pass away? I hope you know what you're really asking. The answer to that question requires staring into the abyss in which Joshua and the rest of us reside. And it will stare back. Are you prepared for that? Tell me. I don't know if I'm ready for what's coming or whatever, but... I want to know what kind of path Joshua's followed. If nothing else, I have to know that. Do you wish? It was a little over 10 years ago, back when you can still find the village of Hamel on the maps of Erebonia and Libero. Or Libero. Hmm. 
look at little Joshua. Anyways, Mama was a tiny little place. There weren't many other young people, so the three of us were always together. I dreamed of becoming a bracer, and I spent my free time practicing my swordsmanship. Karen and Joshua would watch and encourage me. And that was how we yeah, that was how we whiled away the days. And once I was done with practice, we would turn our ears to Karen's harmonica. Karen could play anything on that on that harmonica. Ugh, on that harmonica. Anything, yeah, anything. But my favorite was always the old Erebonian folk song, The Whereabouts of Light. It seemed like that bliss would last forever. We believed that, and we had no reason to doubt it. That day dawned and began just like any other, and then they came. A band of invaders, gra yeah, bleh, garbed in black and armed with Liberian weaponry, came from nowhere. They encircled the village and slaughtered everyone in sight. None were spared, not the old, not the infirm, not the young, and the defenseless, not even infants. Those who were killed quickly in the opening moments were the luckiest by far. And the women? Even in this telling, there were some things I will not recount. So yeah, you already know what happened. Crazy, right? We fled desperately from... Yeah, we... Fl uh, we fled desperately. We were lucky to be in the position to escape when they attacked... When they attacked began. We fled for the outskirts of the village. The screams of our own families carried to our ears on the wind. And once we got into the outskirts, I told Karen and Joshua I would act as bait to confuse, uh, to confuse the pursuers. I promised them that I would catch up with them as soon... Yeah, the them soon and sent them aside, or ahead, I can't read. But the attackers, they had laid their plans well. They had people in position to deal with anyone who tried to flee. When we finally caught up to them, the scene was strangely quiet. A man, dead shot through the throat. Joshua with a gun in his hand, dumbstruck. And Karen, holding Joshua in a horrific wound on her back. She was barely breathing at that point. Even now, the scene seems surreal to me. Karen was calm and content. She entrusted her Monica to Joshua and asked that I take care of him. And then she died quietly, there in that clearing. Why on... Why did that... The Empire invaded Libero almost immediately afterwards. A defenseless little village, its inhabitants slaughtered by men with Liberian arms. It was almost too perfect to excuse... Yeah, to excuse to... Too perfect of an excuse to an invade. Can't be. Now I'm gonna say this, guys, because I didn't catch this until now. But I want you to recall what Luve just said, and try to hold on to that, and, to, and try to hold on to that for the future. Yeah. But if you think you know, go ahead, put in the comments what you think. What, uh, what do you think Luve is actually talking about? There's one thing this game does really good. This game leaves plenty of breadcrumbs for you guys. Plenty. Most of the stuff that you'll forget, being, but when you see it, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember they talked about that, yeah. Barbarian troops doing that? When the local garrison found us, they were adamant the invaders were Liberian. When the war ended a few months later with the Empire's defeat, however, we were given a different tale entirely. They told us instead that a band of Jaeger dropouts had turned to pure brigandry. And they told us to never speak to anyone else of the attack. 
the Erebonians authority the Erebonian authorities announced that Homo had been destroyed in a landslide and all roads leading there were to be closed completely. Hold on, what? Why would they lie about that? Neither explanation makes sense. That's almost like... <laughs> Indeed. Everything was a fabrication by the Warhawks and the Empire to justify the invasions of Libero. <laughs> okay. He, he basically said it right there. I honestly thought that they were going to reveal this a little bit later. Not a little bit later, a whole lot later. Like, maybe, like, Game 7, I think. Game 7 or 8. But never mind. They said it a lot earlier than I thought they were, and I was not expecting it. And at the end of the war, the ruse was discovered, and the Imperial government was thrown into a panic. They conceded to a... Con yeah, they conceded to a comprehensive peace and executed nearly everyone involved in the plot. All to pretend that it never happened. That is still bright. Is a tragedy of Hamel in a fool. That was also when Joshua's heart was broken entirely. He was now burdened with the tortuous death of his sister, his parents, and everyone he knew, and even the shock of taking another man's life. I mean, they do say that killing someone does change a person. How could that not shatter the soul of a six-year-old child? You've luckily heard the rest from Joshua. His spirit was so wholly broken that he lost all will to do nothing but play that harmonica and begun to waste away. That was when the two of us were found by Wiseman. Or Wiseman, I think it's Wiseman. To save Joshua's life, I'd entrusted him to Wiseman and threw myself into Ouroboros training. And then two years later, Joshua repaired, yeah, Joshua repaired, as he was by Weizmann, followed the same path. This is darkness, Estelle. Do you understand what sort of gulf separates you and Joshua now? Do you understand what he stares into every day? I do, yeah. Now I think I really understand why Joshua left. Hmm? Hey, next time you see him, tell Weisman thanks but no thanks. I'll never join Ouroboros. It's not because I like or dislike the society, but as long as I'm going to pull Joshua back over that gulf that you mentioned, forget it. Although I do feel kind of bad about letting Ren down after she went through all the trouble to invite me. Hey. You think she'll forgive me if I say I'm sorry? <laughs> uh, you're one of a kind, Estelle. All right, to hear those horrors and thus lose your hesitation. You truly, yeah, you truly are more than just the daughter of the Divine Blade. Uh, thanks for the compliment, I guess. You s uh, blah. And you say all that, but you care about Joshua too, right? You guys were friends. Or maybe more like brothers. Let me be absolutely clear. That was 10 years ago. To me now, he is nothing more than a rogue element to be eliminated. What? The professor seems to enjoy letting Joshua do as he pleases. I have a different plan in mind. Sooner or later, I will deal with Joshua personally. Wait a second. What is this? Karen asked you to take care of him. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I have my own path. I've chosen for myself. I've dedicated myself to my goal, and any who stand in my way shall die by my blade. Not even Karen's final request will stop me. How can you... Huh? Professor and the others, yes. It looks like the third stage of the plan is getting underway. The third stage what? Uh, that is not for you to know. Once you're finished, you'll be returned to your father. Behave until then. Now just a... 
and as one final note, don't even think of attempting to escape. The Glorious is 8,000 Arjo above ground. You have nowhere to run. Don't even think about attempting to escape, he says. My mom called me and interrupted the recording. Alright, let's see where we at. Alright. As if he doesn't... Yeah, okay. As if he... Ugh. As if he doesn't know that that's human nature for me to want him to do the exact opposite. Besides, he's the only enforcer on board. Alright, why not? Let's do this. She's bold. Okay, timing is going to be everything. If I can figure... Yeah, if I can figure that out, I'll be good. Let's see. I'll wait a couple of hours until they've let their guard down, and then... Right. It's worth a shot. So this is memento day of Karen, huh? Shouldn't have thrown away something so easily, you idiot. We got going on now. Hey, time to change shifts. How's the girl acting? Huh? She's quiet as a mouse. She might be a bracer, but she's still just a kid. Uh, probably curled up in bed, scared out of her mind. Heh, <laughs> babysitting while everyone else is out. Yeah, while everyone else sucks. <sighs> this is so boring. I wanted to get out there into the action. And well, quit your whining. Uh, these lion. Yeah, these are Lionheart soldiers. Or Leonhard soldiers. And heck, it, yeah, and heck if I'm not gonna follow his instructions to the letter. Huh? What was that sound? Hey, what are you up to? You don't think she escaped? Dang it! That stupid girl. Does she not get where she is? Is she trying to kill herself or something? Ah, Gehenna, take me. Right now, she probably fell. Ah, you gotta be kidding me. What are we gonna tell Leonard? Yeah, what are we gonna tell Leonard that'll let us keep our heads? That dang brat. Nothing but a load of trouble. Dang brat, huh? Dang, drop kicked him? Oh, you! Nice try, old man. That girl is dodging bullets? Yo! She turned wild since on. <laughs> Never underestimate a bracer. First of all, you don't think that that was a, a little rude? Calling a sweet maiden like myself a dang brat? It wasn't me. I didn't call you that, I swear. Oh, you didn't? Well, you didn't correct your buddy either. <laughs> It's nap time for you. Dang. End it. Ah! <sighs> okay. Reinforcements are probably going to get here really quick. So, I should book it. There's got to be some way out of this. And I won't give up. Not until I see Joshua. Not until I see that dummy again. Hey. You won't stop for anything, Luve. Wait, you won't suffer anything? Luve? Well, neither will I. Okay, I read that wrong with it being parentheses. Alright, so we beat their tails. We are going to save right there. Um, and I need to saying that she was sorry. I'm like, what you sorry for? <laughs> she was like, for asking awkward. My mom likes to ask questions, and then she kept asking me questions about the whole uh, bed bug thing. And I guess she. You know, she just wanted to make sure I was handling it right, and I was just like, Mom, I'm, I'm good. I appreciate you. But here's the answer to the next 20 questions. I tagged everything that I could. Anything that had fabric on it, I got, I tagged it. And then she was like, okay. And then she sent me a message. She sent me a gif of like a, like a teddy bear just, uh... Oh, I didn't realize that was voice acting. Or not voice acting, anyway. Ah. My arm's all numb. 
so much for a career as a Stell the Wall Crusher, I guess. Terrible. Guess I'll just have to find another way out. That's not what she said, but... So this takes us to the boss. We don't want to, we don't want to go to the boss. Here we go. Misty Veil. We're getting a lot of these. I already have the Misty Veil. Oh. That's a game. I did. That's a uh, that's a hundred damage. It's fun. I got all the chests on this floor. Looks like I'm on the main deck. Someone please tell me why this thing is so ridiculously huge and easy to get lost in. At this point, my only real hopes are to either find a parachute, yeah, parachutes in this game, anyways, or somehow take control of one of the smaller airships. Either way, gotta keep going. I actually don't know what part of the game this is. Or what part of the level is it? Oh, there she is! Crap. Ugh. That's far enough, girly. Not bad. Though escaping from custody on the Glorious and all, the daughter of Cassius Bright does not disappoint. You understand, of, of course. Uh, they're trying... Yeah. That trying to resist it is pointless. Be a good little girl and lay down your weapon. Huh, what a pathetic showing, Estelle Bright. Huh? Oh, don't recognize me with the helmet, do you? Fine then. Look at my face of the one that has bested you. Huh? Huh, you remember at last. I doubt you ever thought of the encounter... Uh, to encounter me again, even in your worst nightmares, hmm? Uh... The second son of the Sky Bandits, Mayor Dalmore's forward steward? Is that him? Actually, I don't know which one to pick. Let me see. I still don't know where I'm at. Oh, I think I remember you. Uh, you're Mayor Dalmore's something or other, I think. How can you be so uncertain? Yes, I am Gilbert, former student of Mayor Dalmore. <laughs> if you guys remember him, yeah. He was definitely in the first game. You can't even remember those who ever yet yeah, those you've arrested. Unbelievable. Well, excuse the heck out of me for being surprised. I mean, first of all, didn't we hand you over to the army? for a trial and stuff? How'd you even manage to get here? You doubt my resourcefulness. During the coup, I managed to escape in the chaos. Shortly thereafter, Ouroboros found me, and so I plunged my I pledged my allegiance to them. I don't know whether to call that tenacious or just thick-headed. Are you seriously a Jaeger? You're not actually going to fight, are you? And again, you underestimate me. I am the prodigy. I am a prodigy of the sword as much as a pen and master. As the pen and master, sure, whatever. Of both. But, um, I remember how you screamed back when you got roughed up by those special op guys in the lighthouse. Do you really think you're cut out for combat? It was all high pitched, too, like. But silence! I've been part of a huge number of combat enhancement programs since I first entered the society's service. My physical abilities have been greatly increased, and my knowledge of battle tactics is unparalleled. 
So don't think you can best me again, Bracer Scum. Uh, for the love of... Ah, uh, just play along for now. Now the Nostel Bright. If you want to live, throw aside your stick. Get down on your knees and beg for mercy. If you do that, I might even forgive your past transgressions. Oh, what an offer. I'm moved to tears over here, really. But sorry. I'm pretty thick-headed, too. <laughs> maybe I can... Yeah, maybe... Yeah, maybe I can't beat one of your crazy... Enforcers on my own. But I sure as heck can throw down with the likes of you. So bring it on, Screamer. Ter terrible. Oh, I'm being jumped. Is that what you thought? Hope you guys realize you're stuck in here with me. Ow. 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 We lost. We lost. Was I supposed to lose here? Hold on, let me see. Was I supposed to lose there? Dang, why do they do so much damage? Try it again. I got lucky this time, guys. I was <laughs> oh gosh, we have to start that over twice. It's just a That's how you do it. That death scream. This is <laughs> the guy did say if you can pull off two death screams, you could win this fight. Ah uh, yeah, so not all right. So winning this fight gives us bonus BP. Uh, saying mayor down, yeah, saying that he was Mayor Downmore's former steward also gives us bonus BP. Bonus BP. Yeah, that was uh, that was easy. Sort of, kinda, I guess. How in the world? Impossible. We outnumber her. Uh, see. That's what a bracer can do, jerkwads. She's Cassia Bright's daughter, all right. And we shouldn't have underestimated her. She has the world's most evilest power. Right then. Pop the safeties. Huh? huh? Surprised, are we? Behold, one of the gifts of Ouroboros. Our bodies surge with power of the society's technology. We are far greater than normal men, especially with these safeties off. <laughs> Just in time. Looks like you're having a hard time. Allow me to assist. That won't be necessary. She's put up quite the fight. But we'll wear her down eventually. You're welcome to watch, of course. I wasn't talking to you. What are you... Oh! Those, those blades! Too slow. Oh, we're dead! What? Huh? What are you doing? Sorry, but you're not cut out for this. The boy said, Borf. Really, what were you thinking? Oh, it's Johnny on botch! What? You may be a full bracer, but you're still a total loose cannon. What are you gonna gain by trying to fight them all by yourself? No way. Joshua? This, um, this isn't a dream, is it? Things would be nicer if it were a dream. Unfortunately, reality isn't so convenient. Huh? Huh, you finally show yourself. Been a while, Luve. You know I would have... Yeah, you... Blah, blah, blah. You knew I'd find my way on board. It was entirely possible, given your skills. Still, I'm curious as to know you actually managed it. To know how. Oh yeah, I boarded one of the scout ships that went ahead to the Glorious to check... Blah, 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 to check its route. None of the enforcers were about. So, it was fairly trivial, trivial to sneak in. Even guessed that Wiseman would request the Ark. 
You really haven't lost your touch, Black Fang. All thanks to you, really. Though it... Yeah, though it always was a bit of a nerve rack. Yeah, it was all, you know, always was a little bit nerve-wracking, wondering if you or someone else would find me. Hmm. There are few who can see through your skill of... Obsification? I don't know how to pronounce that word. But stealth has its weaknesses. The instant someone notices you, you lose your one advantage. You have lost your advantage, Black Fang. What do you think the Fang can do against the Blade Lord? W wait. For your information, Luve, I'm still plenty ready to go. I don't know if you watched that last fight, but I pulled off three of that, uh, that death screen. Which means I have one more in me. I think she has one more in her. I'm not really sure. I don't care how strong you think you are. You won't make it an easy one. I won't make it yet. Stand back, Estelle. Luve is powerful. More so than the both of us combined. Ugh. And knowing that, you still came here. Some might call that naive. But I know you, I know you better than that. What drove you to leave her in the first place? Um, if you wish to protect someone, protect them. If you wish to cut them from your life, then do it completely. Did I not teach... Yeah, bleh. Did I not teach you to be thorough? To be decisive? Yeah, you did. That was the first lesson that you taught me after Weizman was done tuning me. She means that much to you. You should never have left her side. You should have stayed with her. Tormented by guilt or otherwise. Alright, guys. I gotta go um, change my laundry. Normally, I do my laundry at my parents' house. But since the bed bug things, I gotta do them here at my apartment. And I do not want to waste anyone else's time if they have to use the washers as well. So, I'll be right back. Alright. Um, let's see. Did I read this part? Or I don't know. We'll just do it again. Anyways. You should have stayed with her, tormented by guilt or otherwise. The fact that you didn't, or just the fact that you didn't, is just another form of escapism. Nothing but deceit. You mean like playing video games? What's a video game? Anyways, I know that, Luve. I know what you're trying to tell me. Do you really? Ashua? But in that case, what about you, Luve? This should have been my price alone to pay, my burden. And yet you joined the society too. And now they call you the Blade Lord. Why are you still working with Wiseman? My cooperation with Wiseman has nothing to do with you. I do so because of my desires. Your desires? You mean about Karen? Petty revenge won't bring Karen back. So I want to see if her death was worth it. I want to put humanity to the test. That's why I'm working with the professor. Put humanity to the test? Enough talk. You have three options. You and the girl will both surrender. You protect the girl and you die. Or you abandon the girl and escape by yourself. Make your choice. Ashua? Sorry. But I'm taking option four. What? Uh, what? You. I fiddle with the orbital engines a little. When left alone, the society's glorious arc will be another wreck in the ocean floor soon. Hey, Joshua. Did you maybe warn me when you... You really are a magician. You need authorization for the engine room. So I didn't think you'd be able to worm your way in there. I alter each of the 20 engines in a slightly different manner. Weisman could sort it out. Maybe Ren, too. But with them gone, the only one left is you, Luve. You final hasten the hole to put a stop to the plan. Well done. But to use it now... Hmm. Just how long do you intend to keep on deluding yourself? Well, I hope you have an answer the next time we meet. I'll be looking forward to it. Joshua? I, um... We can talk later. 
I've got an airship prepared for escape. We need to head downstairs. Um, uh, yeah, we need to head downstairs ahead of us to get to the hangar. Uh, yeah, come on. All right, so now we finally retrieved Joshua and this little jerk. Um, is level 75? Bro, you were level 72! When did I get to level 70? Did this, did this just happen? Did we just get to level 70 or something? Because I don't remember getting level 70. Well, whatever. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead. I don't remember what I had on for her. I saved, right? You thought you did. There's the airship. Holy. Since when does an airship have its own landing port? Yes. The Crimson Ark, the glorious pride of the society, is meant to be a mothership of sorts. I can provide... Yeah, I can provide... I can provide birthing to... Up to 12 smaller vessels. That's unbelievable. I secured a ship earlier for our escape. It's in the hangar, just farthest in. Got it. All right. Go we'll grab it. That is farthest in, right? Oh, this is farthest in. That's not farthest in. Huh. You're a little bit blade, aren't you? Campanella. You, Campanella. Joshua, how cold. You have that nice long heart. Wait, wait. You, yeah, you have that nice long heart to heart with Luve, and you don't even stop by to say hello to your old friend Campanella. I didn't think you were still on the ship. Let me guess. You knew I was coming this way. Huh. Well, I am one of the grand. Ma I am the one the Grand Master sent to observe the plan. It's my job to notice more than the others do, after all. It's impressive, though. You've changed quite a bit in the, what, half a decade since we last met? you become much more of a man, hmm? And you literally haven't changed at all. Even your appearance is exactly the same, as though you haven't aged a day. Huh. Well, I make sure to never skip my daily skin care, after all. This just in, guys. This video is brought to you by Tej Handley. I'm kidding. <laughs> but seriously, fellas, use Tej Handley. It does wonders for your face. I've heard you enjoy yeah, I've heard you enjoyed a good romp of a dress every now and then. Perhaps I could introduce you to some cosmetics. Hmm. Could you be any more aggressive? You were waiting here for us because you wanted to fight, right? Just fight us already. Huh. Oh my goodness, what a strong little girl. I wonder what kind of girl would pluck your heart or pluck your heart like a grape, Joshua. She's a good match for you, huh? W wait, who plucked whose heart like? Oh, I forget. I forget myself, though. Your proper girlfriend is the bandit girl, isn't it? Oh, Joshua, you're such a stud. <coughs> That's quite enough of your nonsense. I have no idea even what... I have no idea how you even know about your set. But either way, our abilities in combat should be about the same. And I doubt Estelle will sit idly by. You still intend to stop us by force? <laughs> no, no. That wasn't my intent at all. As I said, I'm simply here to deserve the plan unfold. I have no duty to impede you two directly. Wait, really? Then why bother waiting for us here? Say my farewells, of course. But you know, just saying goodbye isn't very exciting at all. So... I thought I'd help make your escape a bit more riveting. I will hit him with a snap. These boys brought in the helis. What? A pale Apache. Flying Orville puppet. That's a puppet? That's a huge puppet. How much does this one cost? The society already has working models. Ah, so a new obstacle arises to block the reunited heroes. 
How will this affect the le- Or, how, how will this affect the legend? Let's find out. That's a, that's a lot of enemies. Nothing I do will let us go first. I have Earth Guard of But it only works on one person. And I have to cast it so late. Alright, Joshua. You and me, we're going to have to speed things up. Alright, right, Joshua, you know what to do. Got scream as well. Got one of these jerks. This guy's the blue jack. You missed your laser, buddy. You have no laser. Let's see what a bisfall looks like. While we do that, let's go ahead and heal up uh, baby girl. This fall, what do you look like? What is that? I did nothing. Okay, so you're just gonna bring in more ads, huh? Ugh. Ugh. Oh, right, you have those moves. Eye, right? Here's one scentless, true dual strike. Oh, he got it. I thought the... Oh, okay. Okay. okay, buddy. You're getting run out. But I can't kill you now. I don't know if this is going to kill or not. I didn't think it was going to kill. But it did give me enough room to work with at the very least. I think this kills. Ah, oh, just barely. 
Oh, well, this kills. I was surprised that they gave me the, uh, what's it called? But hey, we got the kill. Oh, it's a good thing we were far away. That's that point. Let's move out. Alrighty. Did it. Uh, ooh. That's unfair. She's about to level up, I think. Nope, she's not. This, this man's level 75. That's not fair! Oh. Dead. Ah, well done, well done. I expected no less of Joshua. But the Missy really... Yeah, but the Missy really very good as well. The Missy's really good at... Okay, I didn't see the S in Missy's. You... Enough of your stupid messing around. Now, now. There's no need to be so angry. Anyways, it's time for the fool whose act is done to exit stage right. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot he was there. What? Haha. <laughs> well then, you two. Let's meet again soon. He's gone. That's just a little escape trick he knows. Don't worry about it. More importantly. Hey, you sure they came this way? Didn't you hear the sounds, idiot? No doubt about it. Still, we have to hurry. Right. Lock the door. I'll get the airship launched immediately. Got it. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> All right. Activating key. Recognized. Confirmation code entered. And here we go. Huh? I'm opening the hatch via remote control. We'll be launching immediately, so take a seat. Uh, okay. It's them! Fire, don't let them escape! They dip. We're falling! It's fine. There we go. Alright. Think they can just fly away? Heck with that. Sorting the airships. We're going after them. Y'all can catch us. It's like, whoa. Uh, this is a radar, isn't it? There's, um, three lights getting closer, I think. Hmm. Pursuers. We'll need to evade them somehow. Uh, Joshua? You know how to fly an airship? The basics, at least. This ship doesn't have any armaments, however. This isn't the best situation for us to be in. Oh, great. Wait. Why did you go for a ship with no weapons? This ship was on... Yeah, this ship was undergoing maintenance, so the security was lighter. It was an emergency, so I didn't have time to be picky. An emergency? Um, you don't mean... You don't mean the fact that I was caught on the Glorious? Enough. We're gonna be flying rough, so hang on to something. Huh? They is on it. They said we just entered Star Fox, y'all. Bro, they are drifting in the air. <laughs> That's crazy. This is bad. Those guys are chasing us seem pretty good. The pilots have been uh, put through one of the society's pilot uh, piloting force uh, focus enhancement programs, most likely. And they won't be very good at adapting to the uh, to the unusual, but for more common tasks like chasing down a ship, they're very good. I get it. They're like those guys from earlier. If they're bad at adapting, though. Maybe we can cause them some kind of accident. Uh, were we hit? No, wait. That wasn't our ship. Oh! 
Hey. That's no way. Huh, the Bobcat. Why? Joshua. Joshua, you're on the ship, right? I don't know if that's like Josette's voice. Oh yeah, okay, that's Josette's voice. Yeah, it's me. What are you guys doing here? I thought you'd be out of libero by now. Well, my brothers got all worried that you might run into some problems. So we've been shadowing that flying whale for a while. <laughs> really? Who was the one that was begging us to follow Joshua? Looking all worked up and ready to faint? Kyle? Uh, enough, you two. And besides, we have a little payback to give the society ourselves. We thought we could stick around here until we settled the other debt. I see. Thank you. You saved me. Yeah, you better be grateful. We've had an eye on you for a while and noticed that you weren't firing back. There's some kind of problem? I had to take a ship with no armaments. It's proven to be a bit of an issue. I can imagine. What do we do then? Right then. We'll split them in two. You can probably lose one, right? One? No problem. What's the plan then? Blessing of Adios be with you. Joshua, take care, you hear me? I'm surprised they actually went after the Bobcat. I mean, granted, that one does have guns, so they probably do want to take that one out first. Did we actually get away? Still? Anything on the radar? Nope. All lights are out, it looks like. Seems like a completely... Yeah, seems like we completely lost them. Good. Um, I gotta say, I was surprised by the bandits. They're kind of okay. I never thought they'd show up out of the blue to save us like that. Alright. Maybe I've been a bit too hard on them. Eh, it's true. I just saw it says two parties bound to a contract. But I suppose relationships between people aren't, this, uh, aren't that simple. Well, what's this all of a sudden? Two people together and maybe they'll... Yeah, and maybe they'll fight. Maybe they'll be friends. All kinds of stuff can happen. That's just how people act, you know. Yeah. How people act was never very clear in the world that I lived in. Huh? Kill or be killed. Take or be taken from. Until I met you, my life was an endless cycle of such simplicity. But... Um, even you had good times with Luve and your sister, right? Luve told you about that, did he? Well, it's true. I have those memories, but they feel like someone else's. What? Huh? After my heart was shattered, my memories of Hamo were no longer my own. I think it's because I gave up being human and chose to become a puppet. I do clearly remember my sister's death. She and I were attacked by a man lying in wait for stragglers. The man swatted me away and forced my sister to the ground. Oh. At the time, I was too young to know what, yeah, what he probably meant to do. All I knew was that he was hurting my sister and I had a bad feeling so I grabbed onto the man's back and I ended up getting crushed and thrown off immediately. Somehow though, I had managed to get my hands on the man's gun. And thinking about it, Wonder, did I have a talent for killing people even then? i never even been taught how, but I still removed the safety and pulled the trigger with no hesitation. The man fell over, spewing blood from his mouth, looking confused. At that moment, I finally realized I shot a man. He wasn't quite dead yet, though. He jumped up, combat... Yeah, combat knife out, screaming, uh, screaming, I said screaming, <laughs> screaming and gurgling incoherently, but with murder in his eyes. I curled up and closed my eyes like I was being attacked by a wild animal, but there was no impact, 
I was embraced by something soft. When I opened my eyes, there was my sister, gently smiling at me. The man had collapsed at some point, and Luve was standing there, dumbstruck with horror. My sister, cradled by Luve, gave me her harmonica, and then she closed her eyes. I've noticed that Estelle's portrait is bouncing. I don't know if that's a game issue or if it's one of those things where she's like shaken up by the story. I don't know, but this is her second time hearing it, but I guess it's her first time hearing it from Joshua. I remember every detail you see. But even thinking about it, like, this doesn't make me feel sad. It's just a slight tugging at my heart, like reading a stranger's diary. Alright, I am back. My mom called me twice during this recording session. <laughs> my dad called me once, but he called me while I was, uh, while I was changing my laundry out. But yeah, um, I don't even remember what we were at. This, rec this recording session was two hours and 15 minutes so far. Anyways. And the same is true of mine with you. No. I don't think I was changed a little by touching your warmth. Terrible. I learned happiness and joy with you, and finally came to think of you as someone dear. Somewhere it all felt as if it was distant. This is, yeah, I suspect that's what my real self was feeling. The empty void of a broken puppet that is Joshua Stray. The Gull Seaside Way. We over here by Ruan. This is goodbye, Estelle. Please, do not chase after me anymore. I was a little happy to see you one last time, but even so, we should not be together. Being with someone like me will never be good for you. And to be frank, you will only be a burden to me. So, you're a terrible liar, you know that? What? Joshua, listen. Hey, it's the opening part of the game when you boot the game up. With this jingle. I've seen, yeah, I've seen and heard a lot since you left. And now, now I think it, I understand. I understand the reason that you left. The reason, the one you haven't even admitted to yourself. Huh? You can't bear to be with me because your heart's broken. You feel like being with me is someone else's story that can never, ever have. Come on. I'll be a bad influence on you. Or you'll hold me back. What? Hold on, let me turn this. Down. I've been noticing this entire time that my levels have not been on part. It's the audio's gonna dip a little bit, sorry. Um Oh wow, hold up. Wait a minute. Maybe I was wrong. Let me see. No, I was correct. I'm trash. Alright, let's uh scoot that down just a tiny bit. Yeah, because what what what's going on? Game? There we go. And that's a bunch of lies. Every single one. Especially that last one. They aren't lies. No, Joshua. Really, listen. I understand now. You're really, really scared. What? You think it's your fault that your sister died. And you never... Yeah, you never ever forgive you... Blah. And you never ever forgive yourself if something happened to me. That's why you ran away from me that night. Everything else was just pinned on afterwards. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Wiseman's conditioning left me incapable of feeling fear. He took away yeah, he took away my ability to feel it so that I wouldn't hesitate during an operation. You're a little off target, I'm afraid. No, darn it. I'm not talking about something that superficial. Joshua. You said you can't help but feel like your sister's death happened to someone else, right? Do you know why that is? Of course. It's because I'm a broken wreck of a human being. Uh uh no, no, Rongo. You aren't letting self-pity get in the way here. Joshua, you... You just don't want to remember how awful it was when your sister died. 
how you blame yourself for it. Unconsciously, you've been trying to think of it as someone else's problem. To get away from it, a lot of people do that. I... And on that ship, don't tell me you weren't afraid there. I mean, it was a lot of work just to sneak on board, right? But you don't have to hesitate to help me escape. It's almost as if you were trying to get me away from danger as fast as you possibly could. Danger that you were afraid of. You're not a broken wreck, Joshua. You're just scared. Mostly because you care for the people so much that it breaks your heart. And you're lying to yourself about it. That's how I see it, and I know I'm right. But I... I can't... Why? Can you... Have you forgotten, Buster? I'm Libero's number one Joshua watcher. And now that I know all about your past, too, I'm the biggest authority on Joshua's stray in the world. I know more than Wiseman... Yeah, I know more than Wiseman... And Luve, even. <laughs> right, Joshua scared and Joshua brave. Joshua lying and Joshua honest. My beloved Joshua. I finally found you, Joshua. I finally reached you. Stop! But I... I need to say this. I don't want to just be one person that you feel like you have to protect. But as long as I'm a bracer, I can't stay away from danger. And that's not going to change even if you leave again, Joshua. It's what I have to do to be who I am. And so, Joshua, let's make a promise. Promise? Let's go forward together from now on and protect each other equally. I'm strong enough to be able to cover your back now, Joshua. And if you're at my side, there's nothing I can't beat. No matter what kind of crazy nonsense the society throws at me, I won't die. So, so you don't need to be afraid of me anymore. Afraid for me anymore. I promise. But still, I. This boy's leaking in the face. His eyes are leaking. What is that? What is that? It's called crying, Brawl. I don't know what that feels like. I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, why? How? I haven't been able to cry since since Karen died. I never even shed tears as an act, but now? It's okay. No, it's not, Joshua. Be a man! You can never let Estelle see you cry! <laughs> oh, man. No one's looking. Cry as long as you want. And I'll just hold you like this. And, Lestelle, and Estelle lost respect for Joshua that day. <laughs> oh, man. That was, um, a little embarrassing. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, right. Here, let me return this. Oh. Seriously, Joshua. This is your only memento of Karen, right? You shouldn't just fob this over on others without thinking, buddy. Yeah. It was a bit thoughtless of me, wasn't it? I was kind of wondering, what kind of person was she? Kind of person? Hmm. She was friendly to everyone that she met. Kind almost to a fault. And she had dignity born of humility. She and Luve, the Luve back then, were perfect together. I was always a little jealous of them as a child. Friendly? Kind and dignified. So she was a lot like Chloe then. That's a good comparison, thinking about it. Karen didn't, yeah, Karen, but Karen didn't look like Chloe. Wait, what? Yeah, Cl Karen didn't look like Chloe. She had my eyes and hair, but they were similar in spirit. Amber eyes and black hair. Still? Oh, uh, nothing. Oh, speaking of Chloe, you realize you worried her and everyone else sick too. And not just me, right? 
We've got some serious groveling to do when we get back. <laughs> Still, I do. All right. If you say something like, oh, I don't have the right to go back, or I'm just going to drag you back by the hair, okay? Sure, you're a Weisman spy. But you didn't even know it, right? Even helping the bandits get their ship back was done to try to stop the society, right? If you tell Dad about the society's plans, that'll make it even. That's what they call a plea bargain, right? I was like, do you think I'm Takashi 6 9 Do you think I'm going to snitch? <laughs> Anyways. Besides, even if you want to stop the society, you can't get back to the ship, can you? In that case, your only option is to work with us, Buster. And if you hadn't have been abducted, I could have destroyed the Glorious as I originally planned. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, wait, hold on. How can you destroy the Glorious so easily? I know the society was talking about you, but were you really going to kill them all? Alright, I'll take no yeah, it will take nothing less to stop Wiseman or Luve. And even then, the yeah, there's a decent chance they survived the destruction of the Glorious. For the love of No, actually, I think it's for the best I got caught. You were gonna do something like completely crazy, Joshua. Yeah. Mass genocide. You're all <laughs> Estelle's being all cute and naive again, aren't you? No, not at all. It's just that you have a yeah, you have matured a lot as a person while we've been apart. But ultimately, you're still Estelle. That makes me happier than I thought possible. Oh, um, come on, Estelle. I like this Joshua smile still make your heart race. It's because it's been a while, isn't it? Still gets me right there. Hmm. Still? Hey. You got along pretty well with the tomboy, right? Tomboy. Oh, you mean Jasette. Well, at first we had our differences. Even so, we came to understand each other pretty well by the end, I'd say. Understand each. Did you kiss her? What? Question. Answer. Give. <laughs> right. Of course I didn't. Our relationship wasn't like that. Oh, um, good. Well, um, then... Can I request a do-over of that night? A do-over? Oh. Uh, yeah. The first kiss we is really important to a girl, you know? Is it really? I don't know. And it was all your fault that mine got wasted. So you've got to take responsibility. So... Uh, I suppose I do. Hey, Joshua! Wait, who's that? Is that Josette? Did, she, did they follow him? Yeah, they followed us. That's crazy. Uh, the tomboy! Well, what the heck are you... <laughs> yeah, but well, anyways... You got away too, huh? <sighs> I was hoping that you got caught or you stayed caught. Jeez. Maybe I should have thrown you at them as a distraction. But I don't think they like a grimy tomboy. Grimy, I say grimy anyway. Come on, Josette, don't start a fight. Alright. You want to jip to a brief truce, I hope, Miss Bracer. Yeah, well, you guys did save us back there after all. So thank you, really. We wouldn't have made it without you. Ha <laughs> uh, There's no need to thank us. I don't remember saving you. So just keep your thanks to yourself, okay? Okay, one of you is getting dragged off to prison after this, it looks like. That aside, Astray. What are your plans now? Huh? Came to ask again if you wanted to come with us, but... I'm thinking it looks like... We don't even need to ask, huh? Yeah, forgive me. I'm not really certain how things will go from here. Right now, though, I will be traveling with Estelle. Ashua? <laughs> I see! Ah, oh, whatever. At least there's still a chance. What? 
Joshua will remember. You get tired of Miss Airhead over there, just come back to us. You'll always have a place on the Bobcat, okay? Walk over here and call me an Airhead one more time, you greasy Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Gisette. Don, Kyle, I owe all of you so much. Ah, that's our lie. Yeah, well, good luck and stay safe. Hopefully we'll meet again someday. I was expecting Joe set this turn around one more time. So what do you think, guys? You feel sorry for Joe set that she lost out? Yep, oh, and there's my timer. Still? All right, so I'm going to have to cut it right here for right now, guys. Um, there's going to be a quick cut. All right. I'm back, and I got 27 minutes on the clock before I got to change, turn my... Uh, uh, turn my clothes from the washer to the dryer. What is it? Do you understand that, in, that the enemies that we've made are overwhelmingly powerful? You were captured primarily as bait to lure me out, I suspect. That way, the Glorious would be destroyed in Wiseman's absence. Oh. And to be honest, Luve probably could have saved the ship after kicking our bodies out into the sea. I'm fairly sure the reason he didn't was out of pity. Pity at how weak I was, I mean. All the enforcers are the same. In terms of pure power, they are all masters. Far stronger than me, even Ren. We have picked what we will probably be the hardest fight of our lives. Yeah. But I do promise. I promise I won't ever run from reality again. I'll walk with you until the very end. Joshua? I promise to. To the very end. Oh, that's how much time I had left? And I, wow, I wasted all the time. But yeah, guys, that's the end of Chapter 6. This was probably one of the more um, quickest chapters. We got through this one in three parts, I think. Normally, it takes us five to seven parts to finish a chapter. But yeah. So that was cool, right? You guys enjoyed that one, right? Right? Um, but yeah, chapter 6 was dope. Um, next we have chapter 7. And if this is... If this is the chapter that I think it is, we might have some fun here. Maybe. I have no idea. I have no idea. But yeah, it's not letting me um, check my BP points or anything like that. But I'll worry about that next time, guys. But thank you all for watching. This is by far the longest part that I have done with a total. Yeah, because we played from how long? Let me see. We recorded for almost three hours, uh, two hours and 44 minutes. Granted, there were minor distractions. My mom called me twice for about 12, for about like, what, 15 minutes apiece. My dad called me and then I changed laundry about six, five or six times, I think. Since this recording started. Yeah, it's about 4 p.m. Yeah, it's 3.59 p.m. right now, and I believe I started recording around 1 o'clock. Uh, so, yeah, we've been here for a minute. We have definitely been here for a minute. About 1.45-ish, I think. But, yeah, I enjoyed this part. I Wow, yeah. Good chapter. Good chapter. So, yeah, guys, I will see you all with the next one. Peace.